Hello, and welcome to Opera in Brief, the show that summarizes operas for your convenience and entertainment. Though I don't know much about that last part, because today we're talking about Benjamin Britten's dark and disturbing 1954 opera, The Turn of the Screw. The prologue opens with a narrator explaining the situation. A new governess has been hired by her uncle to take care of his two kids who are living far away in an estate. He has three rules for her. One, don't write to him. Two, don't ask about the history of the house. And three, don't abandon the children. So Act 1 starts with the governess who shows up to Bly House and is greeted by the housekeeper and the two kids. She immediately falls in love with them and with the house, but all is not well. They receive a letter saying that the boy Miles has been expelled for injuring one of his classmates. The housekeeper is shocked because Miles is usually so good. The governess is really perceptive though and starts to realize that something must be up. Later that night, the governess is alone on the tower and sees a pale man and she's reasonably shocked. When she tells the housekeeper about it, the housekeeper explains that it had to have been Mr. Quinn, the former valet, who was probably a little bit too intimate with Miles and sleeping with the last governess, Miss Jessel, who was probably also too intimate with Miles' sister, Flora. Oh, and by the way, they're both dead. Because she has a brain in her thinky place, the governess asks, why the f didn't you do anything? And let's just take a break to say that that is the only appropriate response. If you know a child is in an abusive situation, you 100% should do something. But the housekeeper explains that Quinn intimidated her into silence. So the new governess commits herself to the children because she's apparently the only person that that has ever occurred to. Later, when they're playing by the lake, the governess sees a body pop out of the water. Guess what? It's Miss Jessel coming to claim Flora, so they hightail it out of there. But guess what else? Later that night, the kids sneak out after bedtime to meet up with the two ghosts. Fortunately, the governess and the housekeeper are able to intervene before it's too late. And Act 1. Act 2 opens with Quentin Jessel in the middle of the transdimensional ether, arguing over whose fault it is that they couldn't possess the children that night. Meanwhile, in the earthly realm, the children and their caretakers have gone to church. The housekeeper thinks that they're being little angels, but the governess, bless her soul, can see that they're still being creepy and need help. After an off-putting conversation with Miles and a run-in with Miss Jessel, the governess determines that she should write a letter to their father, but she makes the fatal error of telling Miles, who steals the letter at Quint's request. During Miles' piano lesson the next day, Flora gives them the slip, and they find her at the lake looking for Miss Jessel. Flora denies any wrongdoing, and the housekeeper thinks that the governess has gone too far with this fantasy. However, that night, Flora has a demonic outburst and the housekeeper comes to see the truth, albeit too late for the girl. So the governess turns her attention to Miles, who is still being pursued by Quint. After much encouragement, Miles denounces the ghost and dies in the governess's arms as she sings him a song that he taught her. End of opera.